You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. All right, we got a lot to talk about. And, of course, President Trump was indicted at the end of last week on these ridiculous, absurd charges. And we're going to talk about that. There's been a lot of developments over the weekend. And right now, the first post-indictment presidential Republican primary poll is out. And I'm going to go over that poll right now. Okay, I'm not teasing and going to hold it till the end. You know, I I hate when I'm listening to a show. And someone tells you, okay, we've got this thing, and then they never get to it till the very – got to watch the whole thing. you got to listen to the whole thing. I, I just do that right in the beginning, which I don't know. Maybe that's not the smart way to do it. Maybe, maybe them teasing it forever. But I know I get angry when I'm watching a, a show or listening to a podcast, and they tease something, don't get into it for a long time. So I do do it right in the beginning. But after we go through this, we got a whole bunch of other things to talk about too that are pretty big. Okay, But the title can only involve one thing. right? You don't have enough room. So we have the first post-Trump indictment poll. It's a CBS poll. And obviously, you know, you can hear the smile in my voice. I'm very excited. So Trump is way, way, way high in the poll. But it's important to point out it's a CBS poll because CBS is liberal and they hate Trump. Okay, they hate all Republicans, but especially Trump. Listen to this new CBS poll. This is a Republican primary poll. Trump at 61 percent. Wow. Ron DeSantis is at 23 percent. So President Trump has a 38 point lead over DeSantis at 61 percent. Um, tied for third place is Scott and Benedict Pence, both at four percent. Nikki Haley at three. Ramashrami and Hutchinson. at I, I really uh, get mad at these one. people running that have no Chris chance Christie in at hell. one. You know, I really get mad at them. They yeah. have no business being here. Uh, even yeah. DeSantis doesn't have any business, but at least he's in the double digits. These people yeah. have no business running. They're in it for the money, and they got nothing else going on. They want to get on TV yeah. and write a book or whatever, yeah. uh, you know, and, and maybe it'll lead to something else, or B- Trump will pick them as his running mate. But they, they really have no business running. They're just skewing the polls, and they're just, they're yeah. just messing yeah. things up. Exactly. A lot of them just have nothing to do like Chris Christie, right? I mean, what what else does he do? And well, Maybe eats a and lot. So, yeah, that's for sure, C- certainly. And a lot of it, it's a money grab because they, they get money from the campaign. Their family get money from the sure, campaign. Absolutely. Um, some of it's an ego. Some of it's like Ramashwamy, you know, he's, he's both ego and has nothing better to do. Well, some he's on Fox all the time. So he gets on mm-hmm. TV all the time he, and promotes himself. Well, there's a, there's a status that comes with the TV pundit class of having been a presidential candidate, don't you? Know? Absolutely. And it can lead to being a paid um, contributor or having your own show. I mean, you know, that that's why these people do this. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and a lot of like Nikki Haley, a lot of them are elevating themselves to try to get jobs like at Fox or something. But anyway, exactly. let me get into this poll. So those are, the, those are the bare bones numbers. And then they wrote a story about it on CBS, which I've not read. I've not read this story that CBS wrote about their own poll that has Trump at over 60% since the indictment. Uh, so I don't know what it's going to say, but we'll find out together. Republican primary voters say they're far more concerned that Donald Trump's indictment is politically motivated than his alleged conduct being a national security risk. Okay, I'm going to stop there. This big spy just died the other day. Hanson, he was an FBI guy who was a spy. They made that weird movie about him with Ryan Phillippe. Of course, they they made him look like a Christian lunatic, you know, of course, you know. Yes, all, yeah. But anyway. They think all Christians are lunatics. He was a spy. He did it for the money. He, you know, and and Donald Trump, what would be his gain? He's got more money than he could ever spend. And, it, you know, there's no there's no gain in stealing he's, secrets. He's no spy here. You got Biden. They have proof that he's taken bribes from foreign governments uh, and, and they're letting that slide. Yeah. And they're then they're accusing Trump basically mm-hmm. of, of selling their of selling things uh, to these other countries when there's no proof of that. There's no evidence of that at all. Yeah, so this is back to the CBS story. This is the CBS story on their own poll that has Trump at over 60%. 
Uh, and according to the poll, there's no evidence that it's hurt Trump's status as the clear front runner for the 2024 nomination. And then they write, at least not yet. Uh, <laughs> he remains well ahead of his rivals. Um, in fact, most Republican primary voters would not generally consider him keeping the alleged documents with nuclear systems or military plans to be a national security risk uh, at all, according to the poll. That's true. Most explicitly ruled out the charges announcing in the indictment, changing their views on Trump. Rather than being disqualifying in their eyes, even if he's ultimately convicted of a crime in the matter, they overwhelmingly feel he should still be able to serve as president again. Um, interviewing for, the, uh, for this survey was conducted and, you know, it goes into all the, the methodology. But this is the first post-indictment poll. Crazy. So, I'm sure DeSantis isn't happy. That's why he was sweating in Oklahoma yesterday on stage. So – this this indictment has happened, and President Trump has done what no one has ever done before uh, That's that's been facing federal indictment. He did two television appearances and gave two speeches over the weekend after the indictment. Usually people go, go in hiding. Trump has changed some of his lawyers, and it's yeah. a little confusing because there's been mixed reporting. Some reports are saying that his uh, lawyers quit. Some say he got rid of them. I don't know which it is. But it's possible the lawyers quit or were fired over him continually doing speeches and appearances because think, yeah. attorneys don't want their clients to talk when they're facing right. criminal charges. I think that's what it has to do with is is they're advising him not to do interviews and not to do these yeah. speeches and that he's not taking no. their advice and you so know they're, they're, out. they're getting frustrated. That happens all the time. Yeah. And the media are trying to portray this as – they don't want anything to do with him because he's so guilty. Right. No. Don't uh, they don't want anything to do with him because he's guilty and he's out of control. But I'll say, you know, I watched the uh, speeches over the weekend. He uh, on Saturday he had two speeches, one in Georgia and the second one was in North Carolina. Yeah. He did not look like he had a worry in the world. He he really didn't. Well, and, his birthday's Wednesday, mm -hmm. and I think on the radio show. You should use that time to let everybody call in and wish him a happy birthday. That's right. I think that would be a nice be awesome. gesture. So if you guys listen to this show and you listen to Brian on the radio, uh, Brian Craig show on YouTube, 6 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday. Eastern time. With a live chat. 6 to 9 a.m. 6 to 9 a.m. The Steve Kane show, Brian co-hosts. Wednesday, call in and wish President Trump a very happy birthday. Express your support. We know Eric Trump listens to the show. So President Trump probably listens to the show because Eric Trump actually reached out to Brian yeah, and did. thanked him for all his support, which was amazing. And, you know, he is always with his dad and Don Jr. And I'm sure Donald Trump, President Trump has listened. So let's all call in Wednesday. I think that's a great idea, yeah. don't you? And, yeah. and everybody can call in and mm -hmm. wish Trump a happy birthday and why they love him. And, ex and what they love about him and express their support for him. Make it a yeah. positive show, and show support the day after he has to go through this nonsense. And I, you know, I was really ticked off and upset and a little depressed on Friday over all this. I mean, I, I really was. because It's just, it's, it's, and then when I saw Trump over the weekend, I've yeah, been. Yeah, you wouldn't even let me talk about no, it. No, we, we didn't do any podcast no. over the weekend. You're like, I don't want to talk about this right now. I got to process all of this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's why we didn't have any podcasts. Over the, although I did live stream on YouTube over the weekend. We yeah. didn't do any podcasts because I really didn't want to talk, especially on Friday. Yeah. I, I, we usually do a podcast on, on Friday and I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to talk about it. In fact, on the morning show, I didn't even really feel like doing that. I just yeah. was like, this is just it's so much. And then I saw Trump over the weekend at these speeches on Saturday and he looked great. He sounded great. And he, he's going to beat this. And I'll, and I'll tell you this this prosecutor's in real trouble. They they get there's a couple things about this guy. One, there's there's been a lot of reporting that they tried to bribe a witness by promising him a federal judgeship if he said what they wanted him to say. Oh that's my goodness. That's not gonna go away. I believe it. Uh, and this guy has left out the fact that Trump was president and the Presidential Re Records Act is left out of this. And when they show these boxes, mm -hmm. I was watching Dana Bash on CNN. And she had Jim Jordan on, and she was just livid and frustrated that Jim Jordan was showing that these charges are bogus and all of this. What they've shown us are still photographs of a bunch of boxes that they say have classified documents in them. Now, if they all have classified documents in them, that's okay. He was president. 
All those boxes were brought to Mar-a-Lago while he was still president. So everything's fine. There's no problem with it. But they didn't go to those boxes and show that they have classified stuff in them. They keep talking in the media about this tape where he talked about Trump, about these Iran battle plans. Mm -hmm. We're two weeks into that. At the beginning of this week, we'll be two weeks into that story, and there's been no tape Nobody's released. Nobody's heard this tape. I don't believe this and tape exists. And I think it's completely bogus. It's like the video of him with the hookers in Russia that they said they had video but, of but that in they their were story, bribing him with. But if you listen to their story, he didn't go over secret battle plans against Iran with them. He had some papers in it, according to their story, okay, yeah. which I don't believe. This is a very weak case. He had papers in his hand that he said were the Iranian plans, but he couldn't show them to him because he's not president right now and can't declassify. Exactly. So, so what did he do wrong? So he didn't show anybody anything according to their own story. Exactly. Uh, so the whole the whole thing's going to fall apart. And, and when, the good thing is the judge is a Trump-appointed judge. And it's important for us to keep the faith and, and keep hopeful and not give up because, you know, that's yeah. what's keeping him going is our support and, and our being strong with this. So, you know, yeah. you were upset. Steve was upset. And, and, and you, we all were, but then you said to Steve on the phone, I heard you say to him, Trump looks like a cool customer. If he's not worried, we don't need to be worried. That's and right. That's true. That's right. He's so facing this. So yeah, so things are, things are good. Now I want to tell you guys, if you follow me on YouTube, you are aware of this, but you know, I do live streams um, on the weekends. I'm going to start doing more of these live streams during the week too, but I have a home studio that we podcast from. That I also have set up as a as a uh, live stream YouTube studio, which I used to use a long time ago and stopped using it. And I started using it again. And on my YouTube channel, on my live streams from my home studio, which is a very nice studio. And if you've not seen any of those videos, go and watch them. There were two on the weekend, uh, one Saturday, one Sunday. And you'll see it's very nice. I take live calls on that and uh, today, some of the calls were just spectacular, were just great calls from people that are watching live on YouTube. And, um, and I, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from, from listeners about it. And I'm going to start doing a lot more of those. The call-in number is the same number I use in the morning, the 888-465-2631 number. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a much it, – it, the show's in a – it's still me, and I do what I do, but it looks l a lot different than anything you've ever seen me do before because I have a special studio to live stream on YouTube. So go and check those out. And if you don't follow me on YouTube, you should. Brian Craig Show on YouTube. Brian Craig Show on YouTube. Now, uh, so Trump, uh, he says, uh, and th there's a story here. This is in The Guardian. Uh, Donald Trump delivered his first public address following the announcement of his federal indictment in Georgia on Saturday, which, you know, he gave two speeches and they were very different. Uh, the one in Georgia was the first one that was he talked a little bit about the indictment, but yeah. most of it was about what he's going to do in his second term. And then the speech in North Carolina was almost totally about the indictment. Yeah. Uh, the former president took the stage at the state Republican conventions in Georgia and North Carolina, where he lashed out against the Department of Justice, the FBI, and the Biden administration. He called his recent indictment a travesty of justice and repeated unsupport conspiratorial claims that Biden has stashed secret documents in the Chinatown neighborhood of Washington, D.C. Okay, no, that's true. And the, they keep – I did not know that D.C. had a Chinatown. I thought you – know, know, I know about Chinatowns, but I didn't know there was one in D.C. And let me tell you, uh, I don't Why know, the hell would this stuff um, be there? Um, and I can tell you, Mar-a-Lago is a hell of a lot more secure than Chinatown well, the, or Biden's garage. The reason that Biden would have classified documents in Chinatown is because it's easy for the Chinese spies to operate in Chinatown exactly. because they blend in. And the media are trying to blow this off. Biden's got documents at these offices all over the place. And we yep. know that uh, the CCP, the Chinese spies, are all over the place. Um, we've got to stand up to the radical left Democrats and their lawless partisan prosecutors. This is Trump talking. He said, every time I fly over a blue state, I get a subpoena, <laughs> said <laughs> that Trump. That was funny when he said that. And th look at how they word this. The, the Guardian's liberal, yeah. said Trump at the onset of the, uh, of the speech that attempted to bridge his legal troubles with campaign promises. Uh, please. 
Um, Trump says then, I put everything on the line, and I will never yield. I will never be detained, and I will never stop fighting for you. So what he's saying, I will never be detained. So that means when he goes to court on Tuesday, no matter what happens, he's not going to be held in a cell or or. I'm sure the Secret Service has told him that they won't let that happen, that they're in charge of his person, and they supersede any judicial or whatever. And uh, in fact, I don't even know because this has never happened. I don't even know if they could put him in jail if he got convicted. I mean, maybe house arrest, Mm -hmm. but they might be telling him, you know, this has never, ever happened in the history of this. Aren't aren't these Democrats disgusting people? They are disgusting people. It's a whole uniparty. And uh, yeah, exactly. They are a disgrace to this nation, what they're doing to us in this country and President Trump. Yeah, they're sick. Because not only, like he said, they're not just doing it to him. They're doing it to all his supporters, which is at least half the country. Yeah. I'm sure more. You know, it's like a big F you. But I don't even know if they could ever. The liberals are fantasizing he's going to be put in prison. Yeah. I don't think that could ever happen. And I don't think the Secret Service would let that happen. And maybe he knows this. And maybe that's why he's not concerned. And maybe that's why he said that, you know, because they've said, look, sir, it's not going to happen. We're, we're, we're your protection for life. We will never let them detain you. It's, it's a too much of a security risk. Mm-hmm. You're vulnerable. Yeah. Think about it. How vulnerable would a president be locked in a, a small room, a cell where anybody can get to him? Yeah. Uh, it's not a secure thing. So maybe he knows that. And, uh, you know, I think Tuesday – one of two things are going to happen. She's either going to throw everything out. The, the judge. And say, we have the Presidential Paper Act or whatever Records you call Act. it. Records Act. Which is not factored in and none of this is substantiated and mm-hmm. boom. Or she is going to reduce, she is going to take away a lot of these charges yeah. Yeah. and reduce it to like one or two. I think that's, I don't think she's going to leave it as it is. Well, the judge. There's no way. The judge that's overseeing the case in Miami is... Uh, a Trump appointed judge. She's very strong MAGA. Yes, she is. She's the one that allowed the special master to overlook, uh, yes. look into the case when they broke in the Mar-a-Lago. So she's sympathetic and everything else. Thank goodness. And she was assigned randomly. And the, the way they do this in Miami is they actually have like a roulette kind of wheel and all the judges that are up, they spin the wheel and whoever it lands on gets it. And a lot of the judges down there are not available. They have other cases, they have trials going on. So there's... The you know you gotta understand these people that are after Trump. First off, they're government workers, which means they're incompetent just on the, because they're government workers. And the other thing is, their hatred of Trump clouds their thinking, and they don't think out things too clearly. They didn't realize that there were only a couple of available judges, and there was like a fifty percent chance they must that the Trump judge was going to get it. On her. Oh, they, they must have been like, ah, crap. Well, they've got their D.C. grand jury still. True. But this this one in Miami is big, and that case gets thrown out by her on Tuesday would be amazing. I, I hope she dismisses it all. It's it's so abs- – it is what it is. Listen, he's yeah. kicking their butts. He can't be beat. And so you have Joe Biden and, and these people are trying to arrest the front runner to stop him from being president. It's a, it's a pre-coup is what and it is, a pre-coup. you think Joe Biden – we all know this, but if you Democrats, if you're listening, if you think Joe Biden is not in on this. Of course he is. And He Jill. is directly instructing them what to do. And Absolutely. I guarantee you having regular conversations with the DOJ, he is very involved in this, very involved in this. I can promise you that because the more popular Trump – and they're kind of making it happen, but the more popular he gets – the more frightened they become and the, the harder they try to, to stop him. But they're really helping him. <laughs> Every time they go after him, he goes up in the polls because his whole thing is the deep state is after him and that they're out to get him. And every, anybody with a brain in their head, which is anybody who's not a liberal, can see that he is being railroaded and that they are targeting him because he is the, their political enemy. Yeah. And it was funny because Rob Reiner, I don't know why he shows up in your Twitter feed because you don't follow him. No, I don't. But he said, oh, they finally, they're going to lock up the fascist. And I retweeted it and it had over 2,500 likes. And I said, fascists put their political enemies in mm-hmm. jail. Those are the fascists, exactly. not Trump. It's Biden. Exactly. They're, that's what the fascists do. Who is Trump? He, he made jokes and threats, 
but he never went after Hillary. He even said, I'm not going to do that. He didn't go after her. He could have launched an investigation to her. They should have. And the emails. And a lot of people mm-hmm. in MAGA were not happy about that, but he didn't because he knew it'd be bad for the country. Mm-hmm. He didn't go after anybody legally. He might have said stuff, but they're using the DOJ to go after their political See, opponents. If, That's if, crazy. If Trump had been doing what Biden was doing, this $10 million bribe took, uh, this, that, that Biden took, this $10 million he took, uh, yeah to get that Ukrainian prosecutor off of Burisma's back. If Trump were doing things like that, they'd at least have an argument, but they have nothing nothing and no motivation. And when you look at the boxes that they show, they all look to be pretty secure. They're in storerooms at Mar-a-Lago, which is a fortress with a wall around it with Secret Service. And the Secret Service protection is there even when Trump is not. They are always there. And you guys that have followed me on YouTube, I go to Mar-a-Lago quite a bit. And you see, even when Trump is not there, the Secret Service are there, and you, you'll see them. But um, one of the pictures is in the bathroom with all these boxes. And I don't know if that's Trump. I, th- I think it's Trump's bathroom because one of the boxes, they've always got all these classified documents. One of the boxes says on it, Master Bath. So they, they expect us to believe that they loaded up a bunch of classified documents and then and then – Trump had them right on it. Oh, these are the classified documents for the master bathroom. That's just stupid. It makes no sense. He did not dispute the location of these boxes, which I was I thought he would say I didn't put them there. So maybe they were there. But, uh, you know, we don't have basements in Florida. I know they reported that. and There was a big thing about that on the show. No basement at Mar-a-Lago. There's not a lot of storage around in Florida for things like this. Okay, I mean, we have we don't have basements. We have like attics that are hot and sometimes not very big. Sometimes what they do on fancy places like Mar-a-Lago is they build a building covered up in dirt. And then over the years, like grass and stuff grow over it. Right. There's there are no basements there because you go down two feet. You're in the water. So I'm wondering. If, and he's right on the ocean, so there's no basement there. I'm wondering if these places where he had the boxes, and he did not dispute the location, so I'm assuming they were there. If In the bathroom and on the stage, they want to give the impression that these were places frequently located by many, many people. No, not, not And case. I don't think so. I think this bathroom was probably a bathroom that nobody used. Except him and Milani. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it was a bathroom closed off in a private area, and he just thought, well, like you said, the whole building is secure, certainly more secure than Hunter's, uh, than Biden's open garage with the That's carport. Sure. And maybe the stage area behind the curtain was an area that they just don't really use. And I'm not saying that's the best choice to store these things, but I don't think it had the, this, this unlimited access like they're trying to give the impression. Yeah, no. And I, I don't know. Is there anybody that has said, I went through everything. It was right there. And I was a guest and I was no. at a party and I just saw these boxes and started going through them. Yeah. Is there anybody that has come forward no. and said that? No. You know? the, the only thing they have is this tape that no one's seen. Now, listen, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Attention all music lovers and vintage enthusiasts. Discover a treasure trove of vintage shirts at B Design Collection on Etsy. That's B, spelled B-E-E. They have a huge selection of vintage band shirts, including Queen, Black Sabbath, and Elton John's Rocket Man. These shirts are a must-have for any music enthusiast. Imagine wearing the legendary designs of your favorite bands. These vintage shirts come in gold, black, and white, so you can rock in a style that suits your taste. B Design Collection is our Offering a limited time discount. When you use the promo code GOBIG25, receive an exclusive discount at checkout. They also have an incredible variety of shirts for every occasion. What are you waiting for? Elevate your style and visit B Design Collection on Etsy at Etsy.com slash shop slash B Design Collection. That's B spelled B-E-E. Etsy.com slash shop slash B Design Collection. The ultimate destination for vintage shirts and unique designs. Shop now and let your style shine etsy.com slash shop slash b design collection 
Robert Allen Miltonberg invites you to time travel with him to the Roman future. His new novella, available at Amazon.com and Barnes & Noble. It's the golden age of Rome, a time of peace and prosperity. And Scadius Commodius Lavatorius is its greatest scientist. But for all he's achieved, one question haunts him. Will Rome survive the test of time? There's only one way to find out. Come along on this cosmic romp of an adventure. See if you can read the signs any better than a brilliant scientist can. Prediction, science fiction, allegory, national glory. This is a satire at its most gladiatorial. Center stage in the Circus Maximus of your mind. A story of time machines and timeless politics, strange Roman cuisine and gambling parlor tricks, spinning gold and crossing the river sticks. That's the Roman future. Available on Kindle and paperback. Go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble now and visit the Roman future by Robert Allen Miltonberg today. Calling all adventurers, big and small. From author Ken Skelton comes a delightful journey that you will not want to miss. The children's picture book series, Travel with Smiley and Kenny the Car. The first adventure takes readers from Maine to Florida, and it's available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Embark on an exciting road trip across America, exploring the richness of our history, culture, and natural beauty. Through wonderful stories and captivating illustrations, you'll feel like you're right there with Smiley and Kenny. This book series is a treasure for parents, grandparents, and teachers alike. Just imagine sharing the joy and enthusiasm of traveling without leaving your living room. Inspired by his own youthful adventures, author Ken Skelton encourages readers to embrace the thrill of exploration. Travel with Smiley and Kenny the Car from Maine to Florida is the first of five books promising to take you on an incredible journey across all 50 states. So buckle up and join the fun. Grab your copy today on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Travel safe. Travel Travel fun, travel America, and travel the world. Travel with Smiley and Kenny the Car from Maine to Florida. From author Ken Skelton, order your copy right now. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. All right, we're back. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. So, Lindsey Graham was on TV today. He said he's not a spy. Lindsey Graham slams espionage charges against Trump as ridiculous and denounces the DOJ's double standard. Hillary Clinton did similar things and nothing happened to her. Now, the, the thing about this is, see, Hillary Clinton and Biden have done similar things. We both know that they took, we, you know, we, everybody knows about the $10 million Biden bribe for the prosecutor. We, you know, we mentioned that. Hillary Clinton, right? Hillary Clinton had the, the, the whole Clinton Foundation was a money laundering operation for the Clintons. They were doing all kinds of things for favors. Remember, they gave 20% of the U.S. uranium supply to Russia through this third-party company in Canada and everything else. They were doing things Incredible. for money. Donald Trump has all the money in the world, and there's no money motivation yeah. for him to do anything because yeah. he has so much money. These people, they might, they're not poor, but they make, they make the bulk of their money not in business like Trump. They make their money through being corrupt public officials. And when, when people say, well, Biden and Hillary did, did similar or the same things, that's not true. They actually were doing th- – taking bribes and kickbacks in exchange for political favors. Trump didn't do any of, of, of that, that they're, they're talking about. Now, yesterday, DeSantis went to Oklahoma. He got the uh, endorsement of the governor there. And if you see him on stage, he was soaking wet. I mean, it looked like he was sweating his butt off, but it got, it got really uh, embarrassing for him. The governor of Oklahoma actually asked the crowd to cheer for DeSantis during the rally. Um, like Jeb Bush, yeah. please clap. Yeah, and, you know— uh, it, Oh, my goodness gracious. Ron DeSantis—you know, it's really interesting about Ron DeSantis, okay? Ron DeSantis was pumped up as all these things, and he is really unpopular. You it's know, it's— Yeah, I was really talking to my unpopular. dad about it the other day. And my dad, he's—you know, he belongs to a country club. Here in, in Florida. In, he's in Martin County, which is very conservative. And uh, he golfs with a lot of different people all the time and everything. He's even golfed with people that know Trump. And uh, I asked him the other day, I said, what do your friends, you know, he has a lot of friends. And yeah. I said, what do your friends say about DeSantis? Oh, they don't like him. None of them like him. They want Trump. Right. 
They think he's with the deep state. He's with the Koch brothers, Paul Ryan, the Bushes. They want nothing to do with him. Yeah. So this this is a, the problem DeSantis is having. And Trump said something at his speeches that really put it in perspective. He said, you know, you help a guy and you help him get elected and there's no loyalty there. That's right. He's not asking for loyalty for life, but loyalty for now. I mean, he would not have been elected if it wasn't for Trump. He, If you live in Florida, you know, he was way behind the other primary. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. I just forgot his name that you asked me. The, and, the, the uh, guy he was running against. He was very well known in Florida. He was like a farmer or something. Or a, He was the uh, secretary of agriculture. Right. And he's from, very well known. He's from an old Florida yeah, old, political old broker Florida. family. Yeah. And he was way ahead by double digits. And nobody really knew of DeSantis or anything. But this guy was very well known. And Even uh, though we can't remember his name. Yeah. Him. And Trump came along. And endorsed him with a tweet and spoke at some of his at some rallies, brought him up and everything. He would not be governor without Trump. That we know for certain. And it tells you the kind of man DeSantis is He's a snake to turn around and, and like stab him in the back. Oh, yeah, that's really what this is all about. And Trump talked about that yesterday. And he said, you help a guy. And he said, and then. You get him elected, and then he said, then he he turns around and he just like he stabs you in the back. He just screws you over. He said, "There's no loyalty it's like there." Pence. He said, "What is that about?" I mean, he was really like, I think he's like almost hurt and perplexed over DeSantis yeah. doing that because he thought he was his friend. Mm-hmm. Remember when he used his kids as props and had them more at MAGA hats and had the book, yeah, and and building a little wall with bricks. What a scumbag. And Trump thought he was his friend. He probably thought down the road, you know, I'm going to become president and I'll hand the torch to him and it'll be another eight years of MAGA. And then he finds out this guy was just uh, a liar well, and, and, a che- and it just tr- he just tricked everybody. And in, in Florida, I know how unpopular he is. Everybody that oh, yeah. is, you know, th- this is a Trump state. You know, and everybody knows here what DeSantis has done. Oh, yeah. But when you see DeSantis go around the country, he's not doing well. These polls that they're doing uh, are polls in Iowa and New Hampshire and all these, you know, South Carolina, yeah. these early primary states. And he's getting he's getting creamed in them. It, uh, Carrie Lake told an interesting story yesterday. She spoke at the Georgia event that Trump was at. And she said she was a last minute speaker that they had Pence scheduled. And she said when it came public that Pence was speaking, people were calling to ask for refunds for their tickets. Oh, my god! So they canceled Pence. I believe And that. asked Carrie Lake to step in. You know, and I, I know Carrie, Carrie Lake's amazing, but Pence spoke at the North Carolina event earlier in the day before Trump was there. You know, Mike Pence is a sick man. He's a disgusting person, but he's also. Yeah, he's got problems. He's also a sociopath. He knows that everyone, the, the, the Republican voter, hate him, hate him, and he doesn't care. He goes to these events, and he doesn't care. He's com- just a total psycho, sociopath, lunatic, and he's creepy as can be to yeah. Mike Pence. And let me tell you, if I was at event, an event and Mike Pence came out, I would, uh, I would do one of two things. I would either walk out of the room. Yeah. Or turn my chair around and have my back to him. I would that, walk out. I would yeah. want to hear nothing. And I used, I really liked Mike. You never liked Mike Pence. Never and liked I, him. I remember we'd talk about it and I'd be like, oh, you could, he's a good guy. He's always defending yeah. Trump and this and that. Mike Pence is out for Mike Pence. That's right. Only. He has no loyalty. I don't think he's loyal to anybody but himself. And uh, if and he, he's not going to win the presidency. That, that's not going to happen. Oh, he knows that too. But he has no political future anymore. And uh, so what else is he going to do? He wants to make money. And uh, this is, you know, he wrote this book that nobody bought that he was plugging constantly. I don't know why people give him town halls. It's ridiculous. He doesn't have a chance in hell, but he's got nothing else to do. Exactly. I mean, you know, what is he going to do? Sit at home all day and, and have and his wife bug the crap out of him? Mm-hmm. He's got to do something. Um, I don't think they even like him in his own state anymore. I can't imagine. I mean, he's really turned on Trump and going out there and he's Mm -hmm. really perplexing because he'll turn around and defend Trump. And then and then in the next breath, he'll criticize him and bash him. He's playing both sides. 
really. And and that just goes into him. He's just really being out for his own interests. Now, I want to take a moment to talk about Mike Lindell, the Thomas Edison of sleep. And as we are in the summer months in Florida, it's always summer. It's getting hotter and hotter in the 90s every day. But around the country, it's going to be summertime for you around the country, no matter where you are soon enough. And that's when he gets hot. And Mike Lindell's got these two new upgrades on some of his greatest products with the cooling technology. One is the MyPillow 2.0, which has cooling technology. Mm -hmm. And it has the same patented fill that Mike Lindell invented on the inside. But the material is the cooling technology. You'll never flip your pillow over again looking for the cool side. The pillow is always the perfect temperature. Kathy and I each have one. We've been sleeping on them since February. We got it the couple days after I got back from the cruise. And uh, they are just... It's, they're just absolutely amazing. They are buy one, get one free with our promo code Kane mm-hmm. at checkout, K-A-N-E. They'll keep your head and face the perfect temperature, nice and cool all summer long. The other thing is, is the new and improved 3-inch mattress topper 2.0, okay? The 3-inch MyPillow mattress topper 2.0 has cooling technology in it. Kathy and I have one of these to completely regulate your body temperature. So during the hot summer months, your head and your entire body will be the perfect temperature all night long, no matter how hot it is, with the MyPillow 2.0 and the MyPillow 3-inch mattress topper 2.0. So the uh, MyPillow 2.0 with cooling technology is buy one, get one free with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. And the 3-inch MyPillow mattress topper 2.0 with cooling technology with our promo code Kane at checkout at MyPillow.com is 40% off and free shipping. Comes in every mattress size too. All right, so I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. You know, if you want to support the program, uh, a great way to do that is to become a patron of the program. And uh, there's a link to our Patreon page in the description of every episode, including this one, and a direct link on my website, briancraigshow.com. Patreon supporters, if you're a patron, all of you have access to commercial-free editions of the podcast. And our top Patreon supporters get a live, on-air thank you shout-out on each and every podcast episode. So the names you're going to hear now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Rome, Wisconsin, Mike P, Arctic Fox, John, Paulette, Carlos, David, Richard, and Melissa. These are our top Patreon supporters. So again, if you'd like to become a Patreon, a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the episode description. We'll be right back. Calling all business owners, HR leaders, and senior executives. Discover the future of hiring with Irina Volohina's online course, Latest Trends and Best Practices in Recruitment. In this course, you'll dive into the newest trends, master the most effective practices, and revolutionize your recruitment strategy. Go right now to Udemy.com and type in Latest Trends in Recruitment in the search bar. That's Latest Trends in Recruitment in the search bar and empower your business with top-tier talent today from author dwight reynolds comes your next must read book never been better memories of people places and experiences available on amazon journey with the thompson family as they leave the emerald shores of ireland braving the atlantic for a new life in america experience their trials and the spirit of humanity the author weaves unforgettable tales from around the globe all captured with a profound appreciation for life's beauty a spark of humor and a testament to positivity perseverance and family. Never Been Better is perfect for history enthusiasts, memoir lovers, anyone seeking an uplifting read that lingers long after the last page is turned, and book clubs. And a portion of each book sold will be donated to a mental health charity. So not only will you embark on an unforgettable journey, but you'll also be helping a great cause. Never Been Better is available right now on Amazon. Experience the memories, share the journey, feel the love, because life, as author Dwight Reynolds shows us, has never been better. 
Do you feel lost in the noise of the world? Are you seeking clarity, joy, and perfect health under all conditions? Each of us was born with a guide that holds the answers to all our questions. Author Alex Abusin invites you on an amazing journey to the depth of your soul in his enlightening new book, The Voice Within, available on Amazon and bookbaby.com. As T.S. Eliot once said, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. It's time to recognize and align with your inner voice. It's time to find happiness and unconditional love. It's time to hear your voice within. Embark on this journey with The Voice Within, an amazing journey to the depth of your soul. From author Alex Abusin, now available on Amazon and bookbaby.com. In Kindle, paperback, hardcover, and audiobook. Order your copy right now. Parents, grandparents, and teachers, there's a heartwarming new children's book from author James Carey that you will want to add to your child's must-read list. Strong Evan, Evan and the Adventures of Diabetes, now available on Amazon. Join Evan, a young boy living with diabetes, as he embarks on a series of exciting adventures while learning to manage his condition. Evan refuses to let diabetes hold him back, and with the help of his continuous glucose monitor, insulin pump, and the support of his loving family, he lives life to the fullest. From playing soccer and swimming to climbing mountains and exploring the ocean, he shows that anything is possible when you have determination and a positive attitude. Throughout the book, Evan and his family cook healthy meals and engage in open conversation about managing diabetes. This book teaches valuable life lessons and will inspire young readers. Strong Evan is an engaging and educational story that empowers children to face challenges head on while promoting understanding and empathy for those living with diabetes. Order your copy of Strong Strong Evan, Evan and the Adventures of Diabetes, from author James Carey, on Amazon right now. And give your child the gift of courage, confidence, and compassion with this wonderful children's book. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now... Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Okay, so Barr was on Fox News Sunday today. And let me tell you guys, I was talking about this on my live stream this morning. Um, Fox News is done. They were in last place Thursday night in that's prime crazy. time. MSNBC was number one. And I don't that, think that's ever happened. Well, that's significant because Thursday's the day the indictment story came out. Right. So that was a big news day. Right. And Fox was in third place. And that's not because necessarily, like I've said, that MSNBC is gaining viewers. Fox is just losing viewers. Correct. That means MAGA is not turning on Fox at all. So MSNBC probably has their normal audience numbers, but there's just nobody ahead of them anymore. Yeah. I mean, mean, that seems to me the the case. That's really amazing. It is. And, you know, I I told you guys when they got rid of Tucker at Fox that this was going to be the end of the relevance of cable news in our society, and we're there now. Because what you said is true, Kathy. It's not that MSNBC is gaining viewers. It's just Fox has lost so many that they're in last place on a night that there was major political news, which is really, really unheard of. And Fox, yeah. they're not changing their tune all that much because of no. it. They, so they had Barr on Fox News Sunday today, and he said Trump is toast and this whole thing about him being toast and everything else. He's a real yeah, jerk. Yeah, the, the reality of the situation is everybody knows this. He's number one by far. They can't beat him. They've given up. And they're trying to stop the front runner from being able to run. Everybody knows this. That's why I call it a yeah. pre-coup. And that CBS poll that just came out that we talked about on the beginning of the show is just, they're probably just scratching their heads like, what the hell is going on? I mean, they, don't get they it. really are out of touch with, with the American people. And you were playing clips on your live stream this morning from CNBC. And that guy hosting it looks sick. And it's one call after another. Oh, yeah. Of people, and that's when you were on that show. You got a bunch of liberal callers. That show is typically mostly liberals, and now you see people that are probably maybe voted for Biden or Hillary are like, "What? You know, this is ridiculous. What's going on here?" Even they're realizing this is insane. Well, you know, listen the 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 way that I describe 
the country. It, yeah. It's us against this Washington Capitol crew. And I, I use this example, and it's it won't make sense to you if you're not familiar with the Hunger Games, but the Hunger Games, our country, the Hunger Games is based on the United States. The way the Hunger yeah, Games for worked, sure. and, the, and I, I like the Hunger Games, guys. I like the, those movies. Oh, they made one movie too. The last two movies should have been one movie. They, they were trying to stretch it out for box office, so they, they took the last movie and the last book and made it two movies when there was really only enough for one. But anyway, the whole premise is is they have these 13 districts, of, and it took place in a futuristic United States, by the way, the Hunger Games. And the, the entire country in these districts are slaves to the capital, right? And that's what is yep. going on here. We are slaves to the capital class, yeah. Which is a lot of people, right? I mean, it's it's different groups of people, and you know, the military, the bureaucracy, the donors, China, you know, all this stuff. And these people in Washington, it's like Taylor Swift. It's Taylor Swift's world. You're just living in it, or something. She used to say. Trump called them communists he, yesterday. He said, he said deep said, states too he nice. Said, he said we're either gonna they're gonna defeat us or we're gonna f- defeat them. And he's right. We are on the precipice of the country turning very communistic. And I remember, and I've talked about this when I was in economics in college, the teacher, and you told me that your teacher told you this too. He said, capitalism leads to communism. Communism leads to capitalism and, and, or no, he said, uh, capitalism capitalism leads to socialism, which leads to communism. And we're like, we've been in socialistic teetering on that a long time too. But now you actually, and I, when he said that, I thought that was crazy. But now you actually see it happening with what's going on with Trump and and everything happening and the control that they're wielding over all of us with COVID and all this stuff. And that's what Trump was talking about. He said, these are communists. And yeah. they've been very in the country since communism began. I mean, they had meetings, they had the whole thing in Hollywood and all that. But now they're just emboldened and they're not even hiding anymore. They're like out and boom. That's well, like the their way, vision for the country. See, the, the thing with Trump, is Trump is the first president, maybe ever, certainly in our lifetimes, anyone listening to this, who has actually won the nomination as the choice of the people. All the other guys that become president, they're like DeSantis, right? They're groomed from college sometimes before, right. and they're prepared. And by the time they get to the level where they're running for president, they're already compromised, they're on the take, they're yep. corrupt like Biden. You know, the, the reason they made Biden president is because he's senile at and out of it. All he cares about is money, and he's corrupt. And they, the 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 Washington Capitol crew here, were wanted to take control back of the country away from the people. And what better way to do that than have a guy that does everything for ten percent? You know, right. Biden. You know, because he he that's that's what it's all about. You know, Biden's so corrupt he doesn't even know he's corrupt. Okay, he really doesn't think he's a bad guy. He just thinks this is well, how he doesn't Washington know any works. different. Yeah. Well, no, he's this always has been, been his way. reality for the last 60 but, years. But the but what's going on here is they're desperate to try to get back to that old system. And, and if you remember, yes. we like right now, we got all these idiots running in the primary. Right. It, it, we've always had a bunch of people in the primaries and everybody picked a candidate. Yeah, I'm talking about like like all the Republicans would have their candidate. This is before Trump. Mm-hmm. And it was like a sporting event for the mob. And then, okay, somebody would win and you didn't like them and all this stuff. But, they, but they're still a Republican or they're still – But it's both not, candidates were in on it. So either, right. so either way, they were still in control. Whoever won – It didn't matter. It didn't matter. <laughs> That's the difference. The uniparty. And you're right. Trump slipped through and they're terrified – that not only will he win, that he will have a successor who will continue. And break the and back. He, he yeah. woke up so many people, especially minorities and gays. He woke up a lot of people that were on the Democratic plantation. And that scares the hell out of them even well, more. Yeah, he, and, read, he red-pilled all you these know, people. And this, if Trump does not win in 2024, we are officially a one-party state, which is what they have in communist dictatorships like the Soviet Union and Cuba and stuff like this. There'll okay? never be another Trump. So, never. yeah, and never. It, it's it's bad news, and it's scary. And all these people – here we are. We had the indictment on Thursday. All these jerks running for president, you know, they have mild disapproval of it. None of them have dropped out and say, you know, this is insane. I'm endorsing Trump. Right. You know, Carrie Lake is going to the courthouse with President Trump on Tuesday. By the way, Laura Loomer 
is or I talked to Laura Loomer last night. Laura Loomer is organizing a peaceful demonstration in support of President Trump at the federal courthouse in Miami. Yeah. So, and uh, she said she's going to be there. She told me she's going to be there with Carrie Lake. So uh, and with with highlight on peaceful. OK, peaceful. Um, the the thing about the, Trump, he said last night, he was talking about all these. Th- this was in the North Carolina speech, I believe. Mm-hmm. He's talking about all these things he's going through. He says nobody else could withstand this other no, than they, him. That's true. And and the reason he can withstand it is because a number of reasons. One, he's got more money than he could ever spend. His family and grandchildren are set up for all right. eternity. He doesn't have to worry about that. And because of his age. So because of the uh, because of the godlike wealth and his a- he has no future aspirations. Plus, I think other than retirement, he has at some lived point. his life in the public eye. That's true. He has been scrutinized and written about for the last forty years, good, bad, and ugly. He knows these people intimately, the press, and I really don't think he's afraid of them. And I and I think that he's so used to this. He put himself out in the, there's a lot of rich guys like him, but he put himself out in the public eye because he wanted to increase his brand and get well known and, and help his company and all this stuff. He willingly did that. He willingly, there's a lot of billionaires that live private lives, but he didn't want to do that. I mean, he, we saw him in the eighties on shows and talk shows, and he's always been out in the open. Um, this is the scrutiny. I mean, obviously this is on a whole other level, but he must have just a special kind of personality because I don't know anybody who could handle or withstand this kind, these kind of attacks. But I also really believe that our support, if he did not have our support, if he was not going up in the polls, if he did not hear from people every day, I don't think he could go through this. I think our support don't underestimate that. And the poll numbers are really what get him through. Yeah. And I think when he wakes up, if, if, if this is not going to happen, but say his poll numbers started to go down and really down, I think he would have a different attitude. Like, you know, well, the people don't love me anymore and I don't know. But he knows the people love him. The people support him. The poll numbers show it. He hears from people. He sees people. He talks to people. He got off the plane the other day. There were people at the airport hugging him, kissing him, wanting his autograph, hundreds of people. That is what, to me, keeps him going more than anything, is the support. And that's why I said on Wednesday, on his birthday, people should call into your show, say why they love him, say happy birthday, because you really, especially now, especially this week, you really need to show him how much you love him, support him. He needs that. Yeah, so I, I you think know, on, the, um, on the Drudge Report, they have O.J. Simpson offers legal advice to Trump, don't talk. Well, the difference between O.J. Oh, Simpson, you know, the difference between O.J. Simpson and Donald Trump is O.J. Simpson was guilty of exactly. what he was being accused of. He That's killed right. two people. That's okay? right. Donald Trump has done no wrong. Yeah. He has nothing to fear. Now, um, a couple of things, though, I want to say before we close. Number one, if there's something you would like to advertise or promote on the podcast, my YouTube channel, even the radio or all of the above, send me an email. Uh, go to briancraigshow.com. If you have something you would like to advertise or promote, you can do it right there at briancraigshow.com. If you have a product, a service, a book, a company, anything you're interested in um, promoting, and, and uh, you send us an email there, send us the link, okay? And also uh, – a way to contact you by phone if you don't mind. But it doesn't have to be by phone. But if you got a phone number, Kathy or I or yep. both of us will call you. Yep. Otherwise, we'll reach out through email. But um, it, you know, somebody the other day had emailed about advertising, and I called them up. They were in shock that I called them. Yeah. I, I, I called. <laughs> but um, just go to briancraigshow.com. You can uh, send us an email that way. And also, guys, I talked about this a bit at the beginning. I want to talk about it again. Um, if you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, Brian Craig show on YouTube, if, if you can tell I have upgraded significantly mm-hmm. what I'm doing on YouTube with my home broadcast studio, where I take live calls, uh, from my home, uh, live streaming studio, which is a very nice studio that our daughter set up for me. So if you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, please do Brian Craig show on YouTube and, and check out the merch shelf on the YouTube channel in this yeah, video and that's you'll see right. the merch we have. T-shirts, 
stickers, mugs, all things uh, that I designed. And uh, we have like four or five designs in there. And uh, check that out too. We have a lot of cool stuff. That's right. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Have you dreamed of starting a successful online business but didn't know how or even where to begin? If you're ready to turn your dreams of a successful online business into reality, look no further. Introducing How to Start an Online Business, your ultimate guide to navigating the exciting world of online commerce. This comprehensive resource is designed to equip aspiring entrepreneurs just like you with the knowledge, tools, and strategies needed to launch and grow your digital venture. From idea to successful launch, How to Start an Online Business provides step-by-step guidance and valuable insights at every stage of your entrepreneurial journey. It's packed with actionable tips, real-life case studies, and expert advice from successful online entrepreneurs. How to Start an Online Business is more than just theory. It's a practical resource that empowers you to make informed decisions and overcome obstacles. No matter your background or experience level, this book can help you harness the power of the Internet and create your digital empire. Visit eTechEcom.com com slash opt dash in for a free video and ebook on how to start an online business etech ecommerce.com slash opt dash in and begin your journey to online entrepreneurship etech ecommerce.com slash opt dash in